Hello, welcome to EverydayHDR.com. My name is Blake Rudis, and today I want to talk about the power of the PNG file and Photoshop. Now, what you're seeing here is the latest endeavor that myself and my business partner, David Dubay, are working on called Learn Photo Now. It's our new photo training company that we've created, but there are a lot of PNG files on this website. So what you're seeing on this website, the background, that blue background that you're seeing there, that is built into the website. So if we want to incorporate an image onto that blue background, we'd have to create a logo that did not have a white background to begin with. And you can't do that with the JPEG. You can only do that with the PNG. So this Learn Photo Now with the film strip in the background, that is actually a .png file, not a JPEG. So we'll go ahead and let this progress a second here. On the next page, you're going to see each one of these courses, Basic, Advanced, HDR. Those, every one of those is a .png file, a separate .png file. So now let's go into Photoshop and talk about how we can make a PNG file. And not only that, I'm going to show you how you can incorporate it into PowerPoint PowerPoints, um, which are very similar to importing into a website. So let's look at the logo that we've created here for Learn Photo Now. It's very simple. It's just a, a film strip looking thing, like a 35 millimeter negative in the background with Learn Photo Now in the foreground very simple so I'm going to create something similar to this and show you how we can incorporate it into PowerPoint so the first thing when you're creating a logo that is going to be designed to be a .png leave the background white don't do anything with the background just leave it white or make it the color of the background that you're putting it on that's an even better thing to do so for now I'm just gonna leave it white you want to create a new layer always start everything on a new layer so that at any point you can go back and you can turn off your background layer to see how it's going to look as a .png when you save it or you can delete it when you're done like I'm going to show you in a second here so the first part of our uh, learn photo now logo is a 35 millimeter negative which can actually be found in the shapes in Photoshop so in the custom shape button right here go to custom shape tool and we've got ourselves a 35 millimeter negative. So all I did was make this 35 millimeter negative. If you're not seeing what color it is, because if you look at right here on my default colors, they're both white. So I need to change the fill to black. So now we've got a 35 millimeter negative. And I can do pretty much whatever I want to this shape at this point. So what I want to do is rasterize this shape so that I can go into edit and go to transform and then go to warp. And all I'm really going to do is just kind of warp warp this uh, film strip here to make it look like it's it's kind of whimsical and moving. And that's pretty much all I did for the the uh, Learn Photo Now logo. So then <clears throat> I needed to tone it down a little bit because it was a little bit too much for the the logo. Uh, I wanted the text to pop out and not the film strip. So I went ahead and and made, took the opacity and dropped it down a little bit. Added a mask to it and then just hit it a little bit with some um, some darker gray highlights or so that those areas turn down that's a little too dark so let's tone that down a little bit on that gray side I'm working on a mask so if you work with gray on a mask as opposed to black on a mask it adjusts the opacity of that mask based off of the the color that you're using now I could also have made this uh, all black and then gone into the density and change the density as well which would do something very similar but if you're working on a mask that's already gray you want to use lighter shades of gray because the density is going to change the whole thing as a whole so the next thing I want to do is start my text which was freestyle script I'm going to type learn and then I'm going to type another one that's photo and then type another one that is now. So if I take the, the, the text and individually move them, it makes it a lot easier than trying to put them all on the same layer. They're all now different text layers. So I can change this color to black like it is in the logo. And I'll change photo to red like it is in the logo. Now one thing you saw before, I took the text and I pressed Control T or Transform. 
and if you move it up and down on the corners and make it larger or smaller, it's actually still um, a non-rasterized text, so the point changes. So if we want this exact same size font for the photo, instead of trying to make it the same size, we can just copy that by pressing Control C on that point up there, and then when we highlight all of our photo and paste, now we have the exact same size. And it looks like I'm going to move this down a little bit. Control T will allow me to move it to make it very similar to what we have in the original. And with the now, I'm going to make the now the same size as the learn so that the photo kind of pops a little bit more. So that point is 125.49 now. Again, Control C. And I'm going to highlight the now and go to the point and make that the same thing 125.49. And I move that down. And I need to move this sort of behind the photo so that the red of the photo is over top of the now. And I'll change that font again. Again, I can highlight all of the now by pressing T for the text uh, tool and change that to black. And then all I really did here is double click on the learn part, add a drop shadow that has a very low opacity and a distance that's pretty far away from the text, but with a very low opacity. So it's not. Uh, the, the shadow isn't the most important part, the text stands out. And then I added a very mild uh, bevel and emboss. Now instead of trying to duplicate those for all three of my fonts here, my text uh, it layers here, I can right click learn and go copy layer style. Then I can press control on now and photo, right click inside their box and, to, and put paste layer. So now I pretty much had the exact same thing as I had before without looking at it. Let me see what my other one looked like. Pretty similar. The other one's a little bit more refined, but we'll go ahead and leave it the way it is for now. Because I, I really what I want to show you here is how to create this PNG. So now I've got the whole thing created here. I've got the learn, I've got the photo now, I've got the background. The background, 35 millimeter there. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the background of my file now. So you see that the the 35 millimeter negative that's in the background. It's very light, it's very faint. It almost looks like it doesn't even uh, exist on the photo. That's because of the opacity of it, it's very light, so that whatever background you put it on, it's that background is gonna shine through that area. So now I'm gonna go to File and Save As and save this on my desktop as .png, something .png, and then change that to Logo. PNG that'll be perfect and save press OK um, now the compression rate we want it to be the smallest and the slowest so that it looks the best and press OK that's my cat Dewey say hi Dewey alright so now if I want to import this onto say a PowerPoint it's very similar to importing it onto a website so I'm going to insert go to picture and then go to my desktop where the logo was and now I've got my logo right there on the PowerPoint. Now this to be in WordPress or whatever website you might be working on, it's very similar. If you add media as a .png, it will show up with a clear background without that white background. And that's if you deleted the background. If we didn't and we save this as, let's say um, we go back and have that white background and go file, save as, and JPEG, what we will end up seeing when we go to insert is a white background instead of that clear background. Now the same is true if we took that white background that was on Learn Photo Now and delete it and then go File, Save As, Desktop, and save it as a JPEG, as logo.jpg even though I deleted the background, it's still going to flatten that image and create a background, a white background. Insert picture, logo JPEG, insert, and we still, even though in Photoshop I told it I do not want that background, I deleted it, 
That's because the way a JPEG saves, it has to flatten it onto something, so it flattens it onto white. So if you're going to be putting any of your pictures or any of your logo designs onto a website or a PowerPoint, I highly suggest the .png file. Again, my name is Blake Rudis with EverydayHDR.com, and today we covered how to create a .png that can be used on a PowerPoint presentation or something like a, a website or any media for that matter that you need a logo to go onto without having that awful white background. Take care, everyone. Have a great weekend.